I've learned a great deal of subject matter from all the professors that I have had over the many years of going to school. Um, people like uh, Joe Elkins, um, Dietrich Richel, Louis Palmer, Wendy Olmsted. Um, and while I learned the content of their subject matter that they were teaching, I also learned a teaching style. Um, and, and, and what I've done is to take much of the teaching style and incorporate it into my style of teaching. Um, one of the professors that uh, was very, or has been very influential uh, to me about style was Professor Keating. Um, he often used um, a little bell that was on his desk um, when the student would either make a correct answer or incorrect answer to a question he had to just tap a bell. It was like it was a bell that was a, for a bellhop in a, hospital, or a hotel. I have in my bookshelf over there um, the one that I use when I'm teaching an on-site class. And Keating also um, had the ability uh, to talk to not only his students, but to inanimate objects, uh, inorganic objects, then, things that were dead, not alive, or never been. Um, several months ago, I uh, talked to my uh, five-year-old uh, grandson who uh, is taking an art history and uh, geology class for me every week when I go down to Indianapolis to babysit for him and for his brother. Um, but I told him about this cabinet that I have. And the cabinet, uh, one night, late one night, just before I went to bed, uh, it, it started to talk to me. And I spent quite some time that evening talking to this Tibetan cabinet. Um, and, and this article is about teaching. It's about you know, teaching at college level and things like that. But it's also about teaching at any level, whether you're a professor or not. It's critically important that we help our students, whether they're our children or grandchildren or kids around our neighborhood, to learn. And we, we, we often need to, um, one of the things that Keating would do to, to, to wake up students and to help them have a different Weltanschauung, a different worldview about what they see in the world, uh, he would often get up and stand on desks. Um, and that kind of kind of wake, wakens the student up to see something kind of outside the traditional box. Um, one, you know, I, I have probably close to around three hundred hours in college, in grad school, and post-grad school. And there were far, far too many professors that had been teaching for years, and they were teaching for primarily a paycheck. Um, and you can, you can tell when you sit in a classroom whether the person that is teaching that class is involved because he cares or she cares or whether that person is just sitting there going through the ropes and then at the end of the month get a paycheck. Um, it is one of the most exhilarating experiences a person can have when you when you're working with a student to have them, you know, question why you said this or why you did this or 
you know, and then have that dialogue. And then all of a sudden the student gets it. And it's, and that, that experience at that time is exhilarating. At the end of the semester, many times they will write to you, you know, after all the grades are in, you know, you're not meeting again. They'll email you and say, you know, that time three or four weeks ago when you said da da da, it just woke me up. I'll tell you. I mean, and, and it's not just with college age students. Uh, Jack and Owen are studying zoology or uh, zoology or um, earth sciences or um, with me and uh, they're they're five years old and three and they love dinosaurs it's just I mean they know many dinosaurs by name when they see a picture of them and uh, one day uh, I in the textbook that I make up for him, which is simply a loose leaf notebook with um, you know, pieces of paper um, or photographs of uh, dinosaurs and famous paintings. Um, one was a uh, dinosaur that was found by some American um, in Argentina, and it's, it is the world's largest dinosaur. And I mentioned to Jack when we were going over this that it was uh, called. Um, uh, Dreadnoticus. Jack says, "Why? What, what's with the name?" And I told him about the British battleship in World War One called Dreadnought. And this was simply the American looking at this huge dinosaur and attributing to that dinosaur in Latin the name Dreadnought. And and to watch Jack's eyes when he understood something. So he was able to tie in and connect the dots between Dreadnoughticus and the British battleship Dreadnought. Um, so, so the teaching experience isn't just in the classroom of a college or university. It is in every place that you find yourself with other people. And I hope you learned something from this video and from this article about how you can apply things like anything to helping a younger generation understand the world in which they live. Um, in the meantime, you take care.